Ma Good evening. Um, can you hear me okay? I sound a little soft. Is it okay? Okay. Is that Emma? Uh, yeah, that now I can hear myself too. Okay. Thank you. Um, so welcome back. It's been, we've been away a, a couple of weeks. We're going to continue to look at the Lama Chirpa, which starts with um, the several subsections, but preceding to where we are now was an extensive section on making supplications to one's Lama, wherein one, uh, through recognizing his many great qualities, makes um, heartfelt supplications for him to guide us so as to enable us ourselves to transform our minds. Now, we come to the result of those supplications, the section where the Lama is guiding us on how to transform our minds. This is the presentation of the graduated stages of the, the path. So this started at verse 84, and um, amongst the three levels of trainings, those which are shared with a practitioner of initial capacity, the, um, we've looked at that in its entirety. We now come to the trainings that are shared with a practitioner of um, uh, intermediate capacity, and these will later be followed by the trainings that are unique to a practitioner of supreme capacity. ตินิยันซาตังอาจุกิเอ่อสมรุทธอนิกิวาตังจิ some as ourselves and all beings, we want to experience only happiness. None of us want to experience any problems, suffering or difficulties of any magnitude. We all aspire to achieve a state of lasting, stable happiness. And this is achieved through accumulating the causes for happiness and eliminating the causes that will otherwise lead to suffering. And where are these causes to be found on our own continuum? The causes for our suffering are to be found within on our continuum. So this is where the solution is also found, where the antidotes are to be applied. In, in brief, the meaning of Buddhist practice is to transform our mind to first come to recognize the causes that lead to happiness and the causes that lead to suffering and strengthen and cultivate those virtuous ways of thinking that will lead to lasting happiness and to recognize and then eradicate the causes that will otherwise lead to suffering. And in brief, to bring these two down to just one, we need to eliminate the ignorance that does not understand reality. And the 
ดงายดงายดงายยอนเอเดซัมลกันเนคันเนตันเนดงายยอนโกเรสตะกันเนชิเนดงายยอนโกเรสิเปดงายยอนบาติดงายดิกันเนดงายดิกันเรสกันเน
So I'm taking uncontrolled rebirth in the, within the realms of samsara that this uh, practitioner is striving to be liberated from or striving, to use the synonym, striving to, to attain freedom from. Tabba <coughs> This determination to achieve liberation or freedom, this comes about independence on causes and conditions. So to accumulate the causes, that will lead to a determination to gain freedom from samsara. One needs to accumulate the causes, and there are two principal causes. Na just like something in our everyday life that we are striving to to achieve we will be doing so because we see it as dispensable as indispensable let's say it's something we want to buy we will be convinced that we have to have it because it is so useful and, and, it, and this particular item of its particular quality will bring such a benefit to us. So we see it as indispensable. So here, in our context, to give rise to the determination wanting freedom from samsara, we need to see the benefits of freedom, the benefits of liberation. The <laughs> え、けてな、て、わだ、て、われ。てね、え、さて、シャンリア、ロバチェバだ、ペンバトバイネ、アンネ、ペンバ、ヤゴトゥトゥゴレ。セ、ソソルカンアイネ、シャンリア、ロ
one of the reasons that stops us from helping others is our own problems and the a burden of our, our own problems. But if we have attained freedom, there's no obstacle for us, well, preventing us from helping others. And in his other, and Tarvasia, the Yomo Basabona, Jeba, Pamba, and Tarvasia, two words, and then Yomo Basabona, Jeba, Pamba, Pamba, Gordiensia, the Sulla Tarva, the Tarvare, as well, Dingan, Sukula Kitty Gave, and then Tarvare, just and then as a DK Sombana, that in Dejin, Sheva Nashi, and Jiki, Luda, Sam Chasangitone, and Ganga Meva, and Shangi, Ganga, Ganga, Chiki, Sui, Tunja, and Dinigi, Jeda, Dinaganga, and Ganga Meva. Liberation is the state where one has completely abandoned the afflictions together with their seeds, completely eradicated them, so that an affliction can never arise again. That is a true cessation, and it is a state of freedom, Freedom from suffering, freedom from the afflictions, this, or a state of liberation, where one is liberated from suffering, liberated from the suffering that this, the, the afflictions lead to. Therefore, one is free from all physical and mental problems and has attained a state of lasting, stable happiness. <laughs> え、で、あの、やんどさんたやたたるべ、どうしてね、ちゃばちゃたるべ、言うてんで、せめんげば、にゃばた。あんでね、たるべ、どんだ、せめんげば、まにゃばいな、たるべ、たるべ、言うてん
perceived. And the other thing is that the people who are in the country are in the country. They are in the country. They in the country. They are 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 The meditations that you're engaging in are presented in a graduated sequence. Hence, on page 15, the outline starts. Meditation on the graduated path, or graded, should be graduated path. So we start with the trainings of the, uh, that are shared with a practitioner of initial capacity, wherein one reflects on the tremendous suffering experienced by beings in the three lower realms of animals, spirits, and hell beings. Independence on that meditation, one now comes in the trainings that are shared with a practitioner of intermediate capacity to reflect on the sufferings of, of beings in the higher realms. So the first, one reflects on the lower realms. Now here, the sufferings of beings in the higher realms. And these are presented um, in, in, within varying divisions, such as we see here, the three sufferings or the threefold division which is firstly the suffering of physical and mental pain, secondly the suffering of transient happiness, and thirdly the suffering of uh, all pervasive suffering. And in that analogy, I assume you do not have some dark in your mind, you will choose a lamnic of blood, and I assume you do not have some dark in that, then it's some of my son to sketch a rubber. Then it's a dark as a lad and milk gave in here, and do my yours, and see that do my carry yours in the dark and do some daddy. Dunga ではてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれてれ
it changes into suffering. I've been in this formerly pleasurable situation too long. I've had enough. I am now suffering. It was pleasure a few minutes ago. I've now had enough. So in this way we see the suffering of change, pleasure into suffering. Or, as it's also translated, the suffering of transient happiness. Because even whilst we are experiencing pleasure, we know that it's transient. This is not the happiness we long for. It is going to end. There is something better than this. But that is what we need to strive for. What we experience here in samsara is not as good as it gets. We can strive for something better. That's, so this is the second type of suffering, the suffering of transient happiness. These first two types of suffering, the suffering of, um, of physical mental pain and the suffering of transient uh, pleasure, arise in dependence on this basis of a body that we have. It's independence on this body that we experience happiness that doesn't last and pain and misery. This body, then, is an illustration of the third type of suffering, all-pervasive suffering, or all-pervasive suffering of conditioning. This body, and, and conditioning in, in the sense of it's come about in dependence on causes, and those causes are contaminated karma, or karma that is contaminated due to being accumulated due to our afflictions. So therefore, because this body has come about, is a ripening of karma that was accumulated due to the afflictions, it is a basis upon which suffering is experienced. The suffering of physical mental pleasure and the suffering of transient happiness. And it's not just you and I who have such a body. It's not just all humans. It's not even just us and all those in the lower realms. Every being in samsara, from the hells to the, the spirits, animals, humans, the gods within the desire realm, and the gods within the form and formless realm, all beings in samsara, their physical basis is, the, uh, uh, is an illustration of all pervasive suffering, as it is the basis upon which the suffering of physical mental pain and the suffering of transient pleasure is experienced. Dunga Tell 
di maje bare kare sene di dunga imba ha mogo enza ha mogo enza de le tar de chigo mai dunga 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 imba ngaza ha gogo we banza de le tar be tablam be ze chigo re sena da dunga giu e dunga da chaba du chigo nga du dunga e dunga imba ha mogo enza de le tar be gi tar du gi dunya gi dumba gi go mar de le tar be gi tablam la be ze chigo go mar da ze Uh, then in brief is the three types of suffering. So of those three, if we take the first, the suffering of physical mental pain, or more commonly translated as the suffering of suffering, this is something that all beings recognize and want to be freed from, want to be liberated from. This is well known. There's no one who wants to experience physical pain or difficulty. There's no one who wants to experience mental pain or difficulty. Everyone has a wish for freedom from the suffering of physical mental pleasure. Having such a determination, we engage in our various activities. For example, in weather like this, we wear warm clothing. Having a wish for freedom from the suffering of physical mental pain is not the realization that we are striving for, because this is an attainment beings already have. It's the next two types of suffering that we don't even recognize. These we need to reflect on, because that is what we need to develop the determination for freedom from. The suffering of transient happiness and the suffering, uh, the all-pervasive all suffering. These two types are still unrecognized by us. We need to recognize them as being suffering, as being in the nature of suffering. This is what we need to reflect on and give rise to determination to be freed from the suffering of, from suffering of transient happiness and all pervasive suffering. It is when we give rise to a determination to be freed from these two levels of, of suffering that we've given rise to a determination to attain li uh, liberation. <laughs> Maggio, ma se non si dice che non si può fare niente, non si dice che 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 non si dice is we are striving for transient happiness. Everything we do is for, it's motivated for happiness, but it's a transient worldly happiness. This is what we're striving for. Buddhism here is presenting that that happiness, because it's transient, is not actually what we yearn for. And therefore, by striving for it and it alone, we are deceiving ourselves. We are consuming our time and our energy in achieving happiness that doesn't lead to the desired result, and in fact, may lead us to create further causes, binding ourselves within samsara. This needs to be reflected on. This is a radical view, and realizing it is important. The nigger do not somebody choosing Nazi, yes, a dagger to be the bell mass on choosing. That Chunala choosing diggy, same Jane Jewish, but so I kept your do, so your shanley as Coron Calayo to me, same Jane, choose your soap, same Jane Shanna, Chinuba, and Ganga, that Jigorwa. A dinner she that, I do not some ding answer the Ganga, do not some ding Ganga, or Richard. Says an answer the Kawa do you get Dungadi, lay down your mojo, Pumbo de Yoba Inza. Delight of suffering, all pervasive suffering. So this we understand through our physical and mental aggregates that we have, 
This is the basis upon which suffering is experienced. And here in our verse, we understand them as through the fourth line, sea monsters. Sea monsters is a, um, a, 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 a poetic translation. A very literal translation would be crocodiles. So we may be more familiar with crocodiles. It's the same word. But what do crocodiles do? With their powerful jaws, they grasp others, uh, grasp other sentient beings, cause them immense suffering and almost certain death. As well as for the uh, perpetrator, the actual animal, the per per perpetrator of that uh, suffering, they too accumulate causes. The crocodile accumulates causes for suffering. So in the analogy, it's the three types of suffering that cause pain to all beings. All the pain that beings are experiencing in the world, whether it's a perceivable pain such as uh, from conflict and, and, and hunger and impoverish, uh, impoverishment and mental anguish, as well as transient suffering and all-pervasive suffering, transient happiness, sorry, and all-pervasive suffering. Every form of pain beings experience come down to the crocodile, the three crocodiles of the three sufferings. Looking at, for us in English, the third line, violently tossed by waves of affliction and karma. This then points to the cause for our contaminated, calm, uh, contaminated uh, physical and mental aggregates. This basis, this, which are the, the third type of suffering, the, the um, all, suffering of all pervasive conditioning. The illustration is physical and mental aggregates, which, like ours, have been achieved through the ripening of karma. Karma that is contaminated because it was accumulated by minds which are afflicted. So therefore there is this sequence. Having this basis upon which we experience suffering came about through our, uh, our own karma, which is contaminated due to that karma being accumulated through afflictions. So this is the sequence being referred to here. And that rebirth with such um, uh, uh, contaminated affliction, uh, uh, contaminated aggregates is something we have no control over. Just like a piece of driftwood or even a, a, a steel ship in the ocean has no control over huge waves. Even huge steel ships are overwhelmed by, by uh, violent storms. So too are ordinary beings like ourselves overwhelmed by our own contaminated karma and our own afflictions. <coughs> Lay <laughs> 
Le Ma This verse clearly present, presents the state of all of us, of all beings bound within samsara. We have no freedom. We long for freedom. We value freedom. But we are bound. And what binds us is our own karma and our afflictions. The state of all samsaric beings is they don't have freedom from their own karma and afflictions. This is the freedom, though, that here in this meditation we are striving to yearn for, a state that is freed from being controlled by one's afflictions, controlled by one's own karma. When we reflect well, we see how we don't have freedom from our karma. Our karma directs us, our afflictions overwhelm us. This we need to reflect on. This is the meaning of freedom. This is the meaning of the word of the meaning of the word freedom from the Buddhist perspective. Here we need to come to see the sequence that us being born in these suffering realms without any control over where we are born and our, our experiences once born is due to our causes, primarily our karma. Our karma is as it is due to the afflictions that accumulated. And those afflictions all have as their root cause the ignorance of true grasping. There is this sequence. And when we become clear on that, we know where we need to direct our attention. We need to eradicate ignorance of true grasping. Because if that is eradicated, everything that would otherwise follow ceases. If there's no ignorance, there's no afflictions, there's no contaminated karma, there's no uncontrolled rebirth in samsara where one has these contaminated physical mental ag aggregates that experience the second, first and second types of suffering. One is freed from suffering. So again, if we eradicate our ignorance of true grasping, no afflictions can arise because their root cause is gone. Therefore, no contaminated karma is accumulated. Therefore, no uncontrolled rebirth is taken with contaminated physical mental aggregates, the third type of suffering, upon which we experience the sec first and second types of suffering. That is freedom. Freedom from suffering in its entirety. And this we need to come to understand, come to know well for ourselves. Andinezanda and 
Nye The verse concludes with what we have as the first line. Please bless me to develop an intense longing for freedom. This intense longing for freedom arises in dependence on what has been reflected on previously, where we reflect that on the sufferings of samsara, the three types of suffering, and recognize that all samsaric beings experience one, two, or three of these types and will continue to do so. That there is no pleasure that is worthy of striving for in samsara. There is no delight worthy of drawing us in because they all lead to, uh, they, they only lead to the experience of temporary happiness followed by disappointment and more frustration. Reflecting again and again that there is nowhere in samsara to long for. Not just the lower realms which clearly no one wants to be born in, but even in the so-called higher realms. There too, one is always in danger of unexpected death and falling into even worse circumstances. We need to reflect then in this way on the three types of suffering giving rise to a disenchantment. See it as not just in our own experience, but throughout the realms of, of, of samsara. In this way, giving rise to a powerful disenchantment. Seeing that, how we are actually quite powerless due to the strength and intensity we have here, the, uh, the, violence, and, uh, the violence of the waves of afflictions and karma. And we know from our own experience how strong our afflictions can be and how they can overwhelm us. And our karma can be, at times, present strong obstacles. So we need to reflect on this to give rise to a strong determination to be freed from the suffering, recognizing how it's it's endless or boundless, to give rise to the determination for freedom. Covid Here, in your meditation, you need to reflect on the sufferings of samsara, on looking at all three, the sufferings of physical mental pain, the suffering of transient happiness, as well as the, the, the basis upon which they experience our physical mental aggregates, all pervasive suffering. And, there, and together with this, one needs to meditate on the sequence by which one suffers. We experience suffering due to our karma, which is contaminated, due to the, it being accumulated under the power of our afflictions, which have as their root cause ignorance, ignorance of true grasping. So these two sections, the three types of suffering, as well as the sequence by which we suffer, need to be reflected on well. <laughs> Carriers and 
In the same meditation, you need to come to recognize suffering, so the threefold division, as well as its origin, or the, its causes, that sequence. Then you move to the next level. Our situation is not hopeless. If you stop there, it may feel like it's hopeless, but we need to recognize that freedom is possible. A cessation of suffering in its entirety is possible, and it's possible for us. So the third point is that freedom is possible. <laughs> And Dele Tana and Tarba said it in the rest of the Union in order to do. And the Karagi was in Dele in Oda, Korea doing Jun Dele, the Jun, the Sola de Matana, the Tabinu Targudu, Sempig, Ta, Koa Dele Targudu Sempig, Koa Dele Tana, Tarba said Topudu Sempig, and Taba Duny, some of the DDS, Tarba, Tardu Shudraki or Jingulos, Tardu get some of Tarba Duny, Demba Shu DDS, just at the Nigi Tarba Duny, Kazi, Shudrago, Gave in a I mentioned earlier two courses or two methods to cultivate so as to give rise to what we see here in the in for us the first line please bless me to develop an intense longing for freedom. That first cause was reflect, reflecting on the sufferings of samsara together with its uh, origin, its causes. The second cause was the, that freedom is possible and the benefits of freedom, namely lasting stable happiness, a mind that is calm and at peace and thereby one is able to truly help and benefit others. So through cultivating these two uh, groups of causes, one gives rise to an intense longing for freedom. And here one turns to one's Lama, asking for inspiration or blessing, so as to be successful in one's meditation on these two points, the sufferings of samsara and that, that freedom is attainable, and thereby to give rise to an intense longing for freedom. Such a delia, and the Jiggy Boomang Boy, or a Jig, such a Domang Boy, and the Kiwi Homer Chukum Boy, Nima Yawashagamare, and the Jiganga de Nutusiore, such a delia, Be Masig, Nima Yawa, and the Jig in Charchu Yawo, and the Tishina Yawo, called Korea Yawo, and the Sad, where that didn't do the Oshu or I said, Such a niche. Nah, and Kuron Kara Damgil, or that pay the letter that Brit on it as I can do miss. That delicate product in a Michibudili, Yadelia, Drugin, some big, some lodi, part draggy, Yadel draggy, top shape, Pesci Chigua, on Dinajiri, and the Korea Duma, Nimi, the Gidusus Reda, said the Korea Dinit Junior, Ganga, Dinit Jun, Dinit, said Paradreche, and Della Tana, Tarba said, you know, you didn't need in the Yora said, Gun, Chicli, Gun, Chicli, you didn't share to, Tangans, the Gardam, the Kuran Gardam, Gachi, or Elabdu, that you and the Dig Digma Drugmes. The dead Tarba said, Dinga go USB, the nigger to near you to Batiki Tandala, and Kori Kundi Kishigore. Kori Kundi Tarba said, Kundi La Tarik Tarba to Mena Kori Kunshina, and the answer like Ganga Chiromato Pandoska and Marva. There's a coalle, Kori Kunishin, Dele Taria Yobache, Dele Tarbig, Tablam Yobache, Taria Tapchi, Tarba Dele Tarbi Tapchi, Tarba Yoba Inza, and the answer, Deepa Lantin Nangorva. cultivating these two sets of causes to give rise to an intense longing for freedom can, can be likened to if you look at two holiday brochures. Somehow a company, <laughs> a holiday company, produced a brochure for a place that if we looked at, we'd call hell on earth. We'd maybe see conflict, an awfully, uh, an ugly environment, and uh, just pain and misery. No one would want to go there. We look at the other brochure, it's like paradise on earth. It's very clear which of the two we'd want to go for. That is likened to the result 
that comes from this meditation. When we come to understand the reality of samsara, how it is pervaded by suffering, our experiences are pervaded by suffering, it's clear we do, will not want to remain in this unending pain and misery. Rather, put all our energy into cultivating the causes that will lead to lasting happiness. And we need to come to recognize this as vividly as if it was two holiday brochures before us. It's very clear then. But for us, we still haven't yet realized the reality of our own situation. And this is what we need to wake up to. Because the freedom that, that Buddha speaks about is freedom from our own confusion, our own blindness. This is the veil we need to look at, uh, the veil we need to lift, and come to recognize the reality of our current situation, as well as what is actually possible for us. <laughs> And that Matopne Rikitua We hear in the section on the trainings shared with the practitioner of intermediate capacity. So the trainings that we engage in here are like elsewhere. There's all, um, alter, uh, altercation, altering of analytical and placement meditation, where one primarily relies on analytical meditation, but as one comes to varying points in the meditation, where a strong uh, feeling of the meditation arises, then place your mind there, abide with that, strengthen your familiarity with this result in the meditation, and then continue with analytical. The first part that one does with analytical meditation is reflecting on the three types of suffering. Reflecting on the suffering of physical mental pain, reflecting on the suffering of transient happiness, and reflecting on all pervasive suffering. We do so again and again, in ever more detail, so as to habituate yourself that all experiences that one has, because one's basis 
these contaminated aggregates are the basis upon which we experience the world. It's in, therefore in the nature of suffering. And therefore, it's to be abandoned, not to be deceived by the delights or the pleasures of samsara, but to wake up to how they actually deceive us. Then secondly in your meditation, or if, if, sorry, if at this point, a strong feeling, recognizing the sufferings of samsara rites, arises, place your mind there. When that subsides, move to the next part of the meditation, where one meditates on the sequence by which one remains bound to the origins or the causes of our suffering. From our ignorance of self-grasping comes all the afflictions, and thereby we accumulate karma, which is contaminated by these afflictions, and we continue to take uncontrolled rebirth within the realms of samsara. We continue to experience pain. When that arises in a, in a powerful way within you, place your mind, rest your mind there. When that subsides, then continue with your meditation again and again in this way, giving rise to determination for freedom, actual freedom. Not the freedom to move or to say things that one wants to, but freedom from the afflictions, freedom from the sufferings of samsara. When you give rise to determination that nothing else matters but putting all our energy into gaining freedom, and when this comes up again and again in one's mind, in a way that's uncontrived, so you don't have to intentionally generate it, that is when one has cultivated a path. So to cultivate a path, one needs to rely on a meditator's close companions, vigilant introspection and mindfulness, as well as overcoming all distraction. When one is able to hold one's determination for freedom, single-pointedly, then one is coming closer to developing uncontrived, definite emergence. But using vigilant introspection, secondly, mindfulness, and thirdly, concentration, or, or meditative stabilization, these three, this is how we start to bring ourselves closer to the generation of an actual path, uncontrived, definite emergence. When that is cultivated, when an uncontrived, definite emergence, an actual path is cultivated, it will only grow, go from strength to strength. And what is going from strength to strength? This determination to be free. And in the end, that's what I would do, and be that the nigger tarbach to good was a big sum of good near lunch. That tarbatoella, and the lagarage was in a jimbat and children or so about the country, some day shattered in the chair. Carasene, the jing and the koala gay, goody led a new mobile, the nigger said, no more but bangore. Chesa, no more but bambala, tanganzugeta, jim churum sumbaina, lungagi, luida, nada, yi. Chicknomopatikapakagore, Tarva said the matum tarva top udu, sebe tarva to nijke, that tarva to be a gondala, you luna isum you can in nature sigme, sebe sum soya, and then jimbe yam lejia, no seva, and sebe yam le dinner sundry is gone some dinner shinia tubia, and then dinner and tombany, chick java, tony, tombany comia, torch, tombany comiadi, and do sine, checom gen, then tombany to locum valetine, and then does a marriage by the bang, bang, but then you're more papa to go away. You move upon some by now, then you could do a call like here, your mother. She's not that hard about to go, is it? Do send the dang and you get, then Yamlin, Jedi, Dangbo, and the Tarbot doing some like Jedi, Jesi, deep party. That Tarbot doing some like Jesi, have a key name, that Tarbot doing ye, some be a good near lunch, young and the Chimba, and suit him, so begin Yaman Garicheva, and Tarbot doing a semi good near lunch, Tarbot to be done dialing, during an ingay, a chicken. Coraci Corgi in Sepeke. In Tarbaj Tobu, Tabatoba, Dandalia, and didn't a Lunga Yusmukon, the Dibaj, Chigmes, and the Samtaya, 
And the Tabatovia, you don't Tabato, Tabato, you don't allow each other. You come to the road, chicken, some diet, do send some dieting, and you tabby some big window lunch, you know, a car to be in there, that Tabato be good. Yeah, you In the meditation, this is where our focus needs to be on that, that sequence of trainings I've just presented. The yogi who has generated uncontrived definite emergence will shift their sequence to what for ourselves we can do in the same meditation, which is engaging in the six trainings, namely generosity, ethics, patience, joy, perseverance, concentration, and wisdom. Amongst these, the first four would have been cultivated already when we're engaging in the trainings shared with a practitioner of initial capacity, generosity, ethics, patience, and, and, and joyous perseverance. But here, with the trainings shared with a practitioner of intermediate capacity, of those six, whilst all six are cultivated, the emphasis is on ethics, ensuring that one does not accumulate any non-virtue, not, not ensuring that one does not come under the influence of the afflictions, as well as concentration, single point of concentration, and wisdom, the wisdom realizing emptiness. Because it's through the wisdom realizing emptiness, in particular when it's conjoined with the power of a concentrated mind, that one can eradicate the root cause of our suffering. You remember the causes that one was cultivating prior to this, to generate definite emergence, were the sufferings of samsara, which come from that sequence which starts with ignorance. Here, now having generated definite emergence, one is training in wisdom, so as to eradicate the sequence, to break it, and therefore bring an end to suffering, and achieve all the benefits of liberation, of freedom. So for ourselves, we first focus on developing the determination to be free through cultivating those causes I mentioned. Thereafter, the six trainings. The six trainings then are an expression of the fulfillment, uh, the, term, the determination to fulfill our aspiration for liberation. And to the extent that this determination arises within us, because it comes on an understanding of our own suffering, We'll have an ever greater appreciation for the suffering of others and it'll be ever easier to help others so they too can stay at the forefront of our motivation that through our spiritual development we'll be able to be of ever more benefit to others. <laughs> Dunga <laughs> Kowa Tabata The meditation I've outlined, I'd encourage most of you to engage in. For those, though, who have a particular obstacle at one point, I'll now slightly modify 
the meditation because I know there are some for whom reflecting on the sufferings of the six realms, in particular those of the lower realms, is quite difficult to do. There's an, an emotional obstacle, uh, there's a strong discontent that arises. So I'd encourage those few of you for whom reflecting on the sufferings of sam samsara, in particular that of the lower realms, is difficult to rather avoid that, to not do that. You already have some understanding of your own suffering. This is, is clear, physical and mental suffering. So use th just that as the first part of the meditation and then put your focus on the, the second cause to give rise to definite emergence. The first was the sufferings of samsara. So then just take what you are aware of in your own life and then put your emphasis on the benefits of liberation and apply yourself in the meditation to think about the benefits of liberation. And there, think about all the sufferings you recognize in your own life or you observe in the others around you and, and understand that a liberated being, a being that is free, is free of all those sufferings. They're free of conflict. They're free of, 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 of violence and aggression. They're free of impoverishment and all difficulties relating to uh, uh, physical discomfort as well as um, um, material uh, poverty. So whatever sufferings one experiences, recognize that a being that is free is free from that. They're free from physical Ill illness and all other forms of uh, physical suffering. And of course, a mind that is freed of suffering. And thereafter then, the second point then to emphasize will be the six trainings of generosity, ethics, patience, and so forth. Put your energy into that part. So for those of you again, for whom reflecting on the sufferings of the six realms, in particular the, the three lower realms, is difficult, do that very lightly, just your, your own sufferings that you're aware of, and then move to the other, other parts of the meditation, put your energy there. Mm, Tabatoko Tonight then, we've come to the section in the text on the training shared with the practitioner of immediate, intermediate capacity, where we start, as we've seen in this verse, in cultivating a determination to attain freedom, freedom from the sufferings of samsara, freedom from uncontrolled rebirth in samsara, freedom from our afflictions and their seeds. And the only way to give rise to this determination is to become vividly aware of the sufferings of samsara. If we don't reflect on the sufferings of samsara in their entirety, we cannot give rise to a determination to be freed from them. To the extent we recognize the sufferings of samsara, we will want to be free of them. And then it's the companion meditation, it's the benefits of liberation, the benefits of freedom. And that, to the extent we give rise to the, uh, this yearning for freedom, we dedicate our merit towards the achievement of this goal. So the starting point is to generate the mind of definite emergence, this then is followed, but you can do it in the same meditation, by reflecting on the six trainings, in particular that of wisdom. So thank you very much, and then we'll conclude here for this week.